So, so give us a give us a a, a a description of how you see life, the body, health, disease, and so on. Yeah, it, it that's a, it's a great question, and I just want to ask if I can use you as a foil for this because I think it may make it a little more interesting for people. Is okay. that okay with you? Yeah. So. You know, just to go into my method, and I think this is a method that we, we can actually use for a lot of things, is I try not to speculate. In, in other words, I think there's a difference between believing and knowing. So, for instance, I, I know that, I, that chairs exist. Why? Because I'm sitting on one. And I, I think that, you know, like... One of the examples I often use is, is native people used to say they could talk to trees. And the Europeans would come along and, and say, that's nonsense, you know, and then they would go up to a tree, listen for five minutes, and they didn't hear anything. And they said, these people are crazy. But if you think about it, you know, they don't say you, the trees can talk English, right? Or that have a larynx. But, and besides that, if I was a tree, I wouldn't talk to a European either who was cutting down all the trees. On the other hand, if you have a thousand year relationship with the trees, they may talk to you in a certain way and tell you things that are valuable. So my point is, I'd like to start from what I know. So we're talking about the human being, right? And what is a human being made of? So if I was to ask you, what is a human being made of? Because I, I know you're an incredible thinker on these things. So what would your answer be? In its foundation, I think it's an information field. Got it. Which relates to consciousness in the end. Right. Now, that's a great answer. Um, but let me give you a different answer. Because the way I start with this, because I don't think 10 people randomly would necessarily agree with you. They might or they might not. So the way I start is a human being has a head and feet and arms and legs and a chest and usually nose hairs and eyes and all those sorts of things. And the reason I start there is I think that everybody would agree with that. And not only that, but if you look at all the systems of medicine and thinking throughout history, Chinese medicine, Ayurvedic medicine, Native American medicine, I think they all agree that we have a head and arms and legs and toenails and feet and the rest of it. So I think we're on safe ground there, right? Okay. Now, what's inside that? Well, what's inside that from the perspective you're coming from is, is organs and, and blood and veins and arteries, but I would still from my perspective, come from the fact that uh, its whole foundation basis is consciousness and information. Yeah, and I agree with you there, but I'm still not quite there yet. Because the next step is I, I, I agree with you that basically inside these, his head and the chest are basically organs and tissues, right? Yeah. Blood vessels, heart, liver, spleen, kidneys, nerves, etc. And Everybody throughout history has agreed with that. Not, not only that, but you can literally see that. So you cut somebody open on an opera, you feel their liver, you can see their heart, you can do a CT scan, you can do an ultrasound, you can, you, there's no doubt uh, that that's what we're made of. And you know, if you look at Chinese medicine, which is an energy sort of medicine, they talk about the energy flow through your kidneys and liver. It's too weak, it's too congested or whatever. Everybody agreed with that. So there we go. Now let's take one of those organs, like the liver, right? What is the liver made of? Well, it uh, is made of cells and tissue. Got it. Now, here is the interesting thing. Everybody usually says a liver is made of cells. Now, the question is, how do you know that? Well, this is where um, I'm coming from a, uh, a different point of view, if you were questioning someone else. Was, um, I, I feel that, the, the, like I say, the whole foundation of it is information and, and how that plays out is different levels of illusion anyway. Right. 
I, I, I believe me, David, I totally agree with that, but I, I'm still sort of stuck on the cell thing. Okay. Because the answer to how we know that a liver is made of cells is because, is because if you actually do an investigation, there is nobody who's ever seen cells in a living liver. You can't see it. And in fact, if you do an ultrasound or if you do an, a visual examination, if you do a CT scan, if you do an MRI, there are no cells there. And the, the only reason we think they're cells is because when you remove a piece of the liver from the living matrix, and then you stain it and poison it and cut it up into little pieces, then under a microscope, you see cells. And I would contend that that's an artifact, that there is no, uh, there are no cells in a living liver. And this gets into one of the main principles of where Western science went wrong. And this is something that Goethe said. He said, the problem is Western scientists wanted to understand frogs. And so they want to understand what a frog is made of and how a frog lives. And it, in your way of saying it, what kind of information system a frog is, right? Right. And the first thing they did was kill the frog. Right. And so, and, and he said, at that point, you can't understand anything about a frog because the frog's dead. And in fact, one of the reasons we kill frogs is we say that helps us understand how to have frogs have better lives. And I can tell you one thing for sure is it didn't help that frog have a better life because that frog's dead. And not only that, but they start, so I'm gonna, I'm a normal doctor, right? I'm a scientist so-called, and I wanna study your liver. And it's too hard to study it while it's in your body right? Because I don't know how to do that. So I, first of all, I take it out, which means it's dead. And now I, now I study it and but dissect it and dissect it until I spend my whole career studying alpha fetal protein in your liver with no relation to, to the, to the original, you know, it, and, and that's why I say, literally your doctor thinks you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> because he studies, you know, interestingly, historically, until 17 or so hundred, nobody did an autopsy. Because why? They, now we say because they were too stupid to do autopsies. But the, the reason was the guy's dead. What do, you, what do you expect to learn from a dead person? There's no life. There's no information system, right? You know, you can use a lot of different words for that. There, there's no coherent water structure. You're just dust. So we don't need to know that. And now that's all we know. So we study death where it's like a death cult. 